All right, welcome back to the Cymax channel. Today I'm gonna show you some work I've been doing with Emacs and GPTEL and MCP, of course in work mode, to design experiments, run experiments, analyze experiments, and we'll do this using Claude Light, which you can see in the bottom corner here. This is a little instrument that I built that is remotely controllable. You can set the R, the G, and the B levels of an RGB LED and measure some outputs. So this has been part of an exploration in using large language models to automate experiments, automate analysis, and uh, coupled with the idea of like, what does an electronic notebook look like in the future? How do you document the work that you're doing, uh, what your intentions are, what the goals are, maybe run experiments, uh, ideally from the notebook, but at least you set up what gets run, uh, then you may run them uh, separately and then you put data back in your notebook for analysis. So um, Emacs is a text editor and GPTEL is an e Emacs Lisp interface to many ChatGPT or GPTs. You can use uh, OpenAI models, Claude, Gemini, local models. There's, there's a whole lot of them. And it has an integration with MCP. And you can do things like define tools. You can uh, create some presets that have specialized uh, system prompts and access to tools. So there is an MCP server I've talked about before and showed how it worked with Claude Desktop. And today we're going to explore how to use it here in Emacs. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is type at Claude Lite. And this is a uh, sugar syn uh, syntax that GPTEL knows to use the preset configured Claude Lite. And uh, let's just ask it to tell me about, uh, about the instrument and see what, it, what this does. So I have this set up to use Claude. Uh, it is showing me that it's calling a tool and we can expand this. If you use the Claude desktop, you might be familiar with it. Uh, it's calling this tool and then it's giving me this output and it says that we can uh, do the following things. There's a light source with an RGB you can set it from zero to one. We can measure these uh, colors. It does a nice job um, explaining it and even gives me some uh, more information. Okay, so let's do um, a simple experiment then. So let's say at Claude Light, find the intensity of the 630 nanometer channel for R equals 0 0.5. All right, uh, here, uh, the way GPTEL works is you, um, you can send this message to, uh, to Claude. I have it bound to a Hydra for convenience, so I just, for me, it's, it's Command G and then G, and it sends everything there. Now, if you watch over here, you probably just saw the, the light turn a little bit red, and uh, that tells you that it actually ran, that's why it's down there. And we have, you know, with R equals half, G zero, B zero. Notice those are defaults. I didn't say to set those to zero. Um, it was just maybe implied up here uh, that, that that's the case. And if we look at what happened in the tool call, these are, this is the JSON that comes out of, of the measurement. And we have here the, the actual JSON that was returned from Claude Light and down here, uh, a textual summary uh, of that. And even here, it, you know, it tells you that it makes sense because we looked at a red light and turned on a red light. Um, and then there were some other notes here about some significant intensities. So uh, 680 is kind of higher than you would ex uh, expect and 590 is higher. That's because my red LED is not, not super pure. It has a, a spectrum uh, that overlaps, and then here's the, the biggest effect. Uh, okay, so that, that's pretty, pretty good. Um, let's say now we want to, uh, let's ask Claude to design an experiment um, that measures the 630 nanometer output of Claude Light for settings of red from zero to one. Um, and let's say make five measurements. 
And here I'm not going to tell um, Claude Light to do that. I'm just going to ask Claude to do it. And so because I didn't prefix it with Claude Light, let's, let's just see what happens here. OK, so that's definitely not doing quite what I imagined. Uh, I did not think it would make a Latin hypercube. So this is something that I think will be a reality when you start asking, you know, how do I get large language models to, uh, to do this? Uh, so it's been, I actually wasn't paying attention to see if it ran. So it actually ran these. I didn't think that it would do that. Um, and here we have uh, the R value and the 630 nanometer intensity. Um, so it, it, it did end up trying a Latin hypercube. That didn't work. It tried a surface response. Those are actually from a PyCSE MCP model that I thought we would get to later. Um, but I guess that's OK. Uh, so now let's see if we can uh, do some analysis. Um, how about write a Jupyter Python source block with code to plot that data, fit a line, and show some fitting statistics. Now, in Claude Desktop, uh, you could do this, and it would generate some JavaScript and, and eventually run it. But here in Emacs, I think this is the right way to do what I want. I'm going to have it generate a Python source that I will be able to run. So it's going to take this table. You can see it's putting the R values in, in the intensities. I asked for a Jupyter Python. It looks like it's giving me a regular Python block. And uh, that's OK. I'm just going to make this uh, Jupyter Python here. I can edit it since it's right there. Um, it copies this data. We probably should look. It looks like inspection seems pretty reasonable. Um, it's using SciPy, uh, it's getting stats, it's doing lin regress, it's going to make a figure. Uh, I don't need to have that, but it's okay to keep it. And so now I can go ahead and run this and see if it works. So here is a plot, and it gives me a slope and a line. Um, and then here are some intercepts. We get some statistics that tell us about uh, significance. And we have uh, a, I don't know why we predicted it at that particular value, but uh, we get some explanation. So that seems uh, pretty reasonable um, all around. And everything is saved right here in this text file. So you can see uh, kind of what's happening. Um, all right, let's go a little bit further. Um, I'm going to call the PyCSE uh, preset. And let's say let's we're going to design a Latin hypercube, and we'll go one one level up. Design a Latin hypercube where R, G, and B have levels at zero, zero point five, and one. And we want to measure the 630 nanometer output. Uh, let's make it 515. That's a greenish. Uh, all right, so this should run a new tool. It's going to tell me that. It's calling the design LHC tool. Um, it doesn't quite get it right the first time. It uh, looks like it's going to try a couple of times. Claude doesn't. Claude either hides this from you or does a better job. So it takes several attempts to get this call right, um, which seems weird. Uh, but then we get our Latin hypercube design, and we need to run nine experiments where we have all of these different levels. And the goal here would be um, which of the channels R, G, and B has the biggest impact on the 515. And it says now we should run that. So let's go ahead and ask Claude. Claude Light, 
run those nine experiments. And so now we should see it make nine different tool calls. And there's one. You see it blinking. Each time you see a line here, you'll see a blink. And you can expand these and see what, what the output looks like. And so here we're, we're recording, you know, what information uh, happened. I, this is amazing to me that, uh, that this is happening. Um, this is a setting in GPTEL to, uh, to store that. And so here we get the results. We get a nice table. Yes, I can press tab to make that look good. We get some initial observations that uh, we seem to uh, saturate at uh, G equals one. And finally, let's do um, at PyCSE, analyze the Latin hypercube results. Now, some of this is happening because I already know those kinds of tools exist, and that is something that you would need to know in advance yourself uh, of what kinds of tools are available. This should look back through the notes and construct a tool call to analyze LHC. And that says that is what it's doing. Maybe. There's one thing that I find a little bit confusing is uh, whether it is doing something in the background and not indicating or whether there was some kind of error message. Oh, all right, so it was doing something. So GPTEL works asynchronously, so it doesn't block you, um, but then it also can kind of leave you hanging sometimes. So here again, I don't know if this is problems with my MCP or with uh, just challenges of how to get the correct field names. PyCSE uses Pydantic behind the scenes to uh, do the right thing, um, and sometimes uh, it doesn't always, it takes a couple of efforts. Now, why does that matter? Probably it matters because each one of these is sending tokens to Claude, so each one of these failed tool calls uh, is potentially costing you money uh, in, in the grand scheme of things. Okay, uh, the analysis of variance reveals a couple of things. Let's, let's see what the actual um, output looks like. We have, it uh, looks like a data frame with some data. Uh, here are some uh, results uh, for each one. And then down here it just summarizes and um, it does say that this is the strongest a little curious why it thinks none of these are significant. I feel like that doesn't make sense. Um, but also not clear why there's a slash there. Oh, I see. It says it's not significant because the critical F is, is 200 and, and we have a measured of, of five, which is less than 200. Um, that may be an artifact of, of something here. Um, it does give some practical implications that uh, this is high, so there may be, maybe something didn't go quite right in the analysis or in the setup. Um, green does show the highest F score and uh, it has the strongest influence, quite a lot more than red and blue, um, but something is maybe off with the 199.5 that would mean you have to like really get in there and see uh, see what's happening. Uh, okay, that's basically all I wanted to show you uh, today is what it what it would look like um, going from you know the very beginning where we can ask uh, these agents that uh, I call it an agent it's because uh, it acts kind of like one it has a specific set of tools available to it. It has specific knowledge about Claude Light and how to run it. And uh, PyCSE is another one of those tools. So what we did here is allow, allow us to use natural language to guide some simple experiments, nothing fancy. Here we ran it one time. 
and uh, just to see that it works, see that our tool gets called, we get some results, then um, it didn't do what I uh, expected here. It tried to design a, um, let's see, It tried to design a Latin hypercube, that's not what I wanted. Then it tried a surface response, that's also not what I wanted. And eventually it did a simpler approach um, here where it did five evenly spaced uh, points. And we got this table. I asked it to generate code that would fit that data, which it did, did a nice job, I think. And we have the data and our statistics. And then finally we did this kind of more sophisticated Latin uh, hypercube and uh, that one took a couple of function calls. Again, in Claude Desktop, I don't think this multiple tool calls happens unless it's just hidden from you and you see the final result. Um, we got a design, and then we asked it to run the experiments and finally uh, do some analysis of variance, and something is unusual. I'm not sure why uh, we see this uh, particular result. Um, it could be, could be because there are three experiments that saturated and that causes some singularity or something. I'm not sure. Um, but we do find out that of these, green is, is a lot stronger than uh, red and blue. Uh, it's just rather questionable if that is a statistically significant result. And it does point out that this is uh, uh, quite high. Okay, that's all, and um, I, think, I think it's pretty exciting that we can run experiments, we can design experiments, um, we can plan things. Obviously, uh, it doesn't always do what you want, and in this case, my experiment it takes about a second to run, and we can run lots of them if we want. If this was uh, more expensive, either in time or, or resources, then you'd want to have some um, some kind of like checkpoints to make sure you don't run experiments until you're very sure that it's going to do all of the right things. All right, I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you next time.